Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Folly. Hello. And welcome to Podcast 2.5. Really, half five, so isn't this a happy one? Talking about fission, fusion, use for reactivity, and a half life. And the wonderful radioactive man. Whoops, that's not what I want to do. So let's get started. Nuclear fission. Fission is splitting of a heavy nucleus into two or more lighter nuclei and some number of neutrons by shooting a neutron. So notice here, I shoot a neutron, but bam, you split into smaller things like barium and krypton and some extra neutrons. Okay? Written in the nuclear fashion, look, you got a neutron. These are smaller. And then you get some neutrons and you get some neutrons. Sometimes you get some neutrons and other stuff. You don't have to predict those things. But if I gave this to you and said, why is this reaction, why is it fission, Whoops. you would say because a big nucleus is hit with a neutron and makes two smaller nuclei and some neutrons. This stuff is optional, and it doesn't have to be uranium-235 uh, either. Okay. Uh, hopefully I have a chain reaction here next. Yes, yeah, chain reaction, a reaction in which the product of one step is the reactant in another step neutrons and nuclear. So if you saw this right here, what do these guys go? They go, I'm going to go find another unstable uranium-235 and kabam and kabam, although of course that's the same one, but you get the idea. Critical mass, the smallest amount of fissionable material necessary to support a continuing change, chain reaction. So the critical mass is what you don't want to have in your backpack as you're traveling. So, fusion reactions. Fusion, a combination of light nuclei to form heavier nuclei. A major fusion reaction occurs continuously in the sun and other stars. So notice here, little bit of hydrogen smashed together, kind of bigger helium and some beta particles. Okay, you don't need to know the several steps, but notice little goes to bigger. Notice probably not big, but just bigger. That's it. So, and pretty picture of fusion, which you don't need to know the details on. So if you drew that one, oh, you didn't have to draw that one. That one's just to make my slide easier. Fission is easy to start, but fusion is tough to start. To start. Fusion is tough to start. You shoot a neutron at a nucleus and it has no repulsion. Neutrons, charge of zero. Nucleus, charge of positive. So there's no repulsion there. If you shoot a positive nucleus at another positive nucleus, they repel. Like having Connor and Caitlin be lab partners. They hate each other. <laughs> So you're causing a fight whenever that happens. Binding energy. If you, if you add the mass of protons and neutrons, you get less than the mass of the nucleus. So that seems weird. You know, if I have seven apples plus three oranges, it should have the same weight, right? Does not equal equals less. Okay? Some mass is converted to energy to hold the repulsive protons together. This is called binding energy. So because they repel, apples and oranges don't repel, but some of, so, but protons do, some of the energy, some of the mass is converted to energy to hold the repulsive protons together. Binding energy, that is called the Einstein equation. Uses of nuclear stuff. So medical uses of nuclear. Power generation plutonium 238 is used to power pacemakers. Why? Oops. Well, the answer, it lasts a long time. I mean, think about how long the batteries last in, like, your Wii. Or even in, like, your iPod. Your iPod, oh, that's great, it lasts, like, four years. Well, you kind of want to live a little longer than four years in your pacemakers. The other thing is medical tracers. So you can inject something into their blood. So here's a person and with two arms. You inject something into their blood, and you can see where the blood goes. And if it congeals someplace, you can go, oh, something's going on there. So positron emission topography, a PET scan detects abnormalities in living tissue without disrupting the tissue. So this would be what a normal brain looks like. You can see all the things that are going on with those other things. And then some of these would be, you know, a little different, maybe. So. And it uses beta particles. Cancer treatment. Cancer cells equal uncontrolled growth. So uncontrolled growth needs extra nutrients because it's growing. So if you send radioactive nutrients that destroy DNA, then, now notice, it destroys DNA and other cells. The idea is kill the cancer before you kill the patient and you win. And that's really the way that it does. That's why, like, your hair falls out when you have cancer treatment, because those are the fastest growing cells, and that happens. So, Engineering, thickness control. So if I have a barrier that's this thick, and I have something radioactive that shoots out 
you know, a bunch of stuff. If it's thin, you know, most of it gets through. If it's thick, less gets through. Okay? And work out an equation to figure out how thick it is. So if you have underground pipes, way underground pipes, and you run something radioactive through your pipes, stuff will come out. And the rate that it comes out will tell you how thick your pipes are. And then, of course, power generation and kablooey. Wow, isn't that nice? Mmm, fishy. Archaeological. Living things have the same ratio of carbon-14 as the atmosphere. Dead things lose their carbon-14 in a half-life manner. So let's take a look at half-life. Atoms decay, but not at a constant rate. So normally, you know, if you're losing money, if you have $100 and you spend $3 a day, it would go, oh, $100, 97, 94, 91, math is hard, can't remember other ones. OK, and that's it. So this would be money, this would be time, and it's linear. But this decays differently. Half of the atoms decay every time period. And then this, when we calculate these, it's an exercise in basic times and then divides them. So let's take a look at it. So notice 100, and one time period it goes to 50, the next time period it goes to 25, next time period 12 and a half. So let's take a look. An isotope of radon has a half-life of 36 minutes. What fraction of the original quantity of actinium range up to 360 minutes? So what I'm going to do is what fraction of it. So my first fraction is 1, and then time is here. So time 0, I have 1. What fraction it remains? A half of it will remain after 36 minutes. Then a quarter will remain after 72. And then an eighth will remain after 108. And then, this is going to take a while. And then a sixteenth will remain after ooh, 1, mm, 44. And then a 32nd will remain after 180. And then a uh, 64th will remain after, oh, this is taking forever. Now, if you notice this goes through it, and you want to figure out how many things this happens, what I can do, and this is the way you do it usually, let's do this usually. Um, if I have 36 minutes, and if it takes 360 minutes, right, 360 divided by 36 is going to be 10 half-lives. So if I have 10 half-lives, what's going to happen is I'm going to take 1 half to the tenth power, right? One half life, that would be the first power, second power, third power. So one half to the tenth power is something I'd need a calculator for, and luckily, I have one right here. So 0.5 raised to the ten is small. Um, 9.76 uh, e negative 4 is what I got. And if I have 1080, 1080 divided by 36, 1080 divided by 36 is 30. So that means I would have 10 to the 30th power. Woo, not 10, half to the 30th power. So quantity 1 divided by 2 quantity raised to the 30. And that is 9.31 e negative 10. So, and that says what quantity or what fraction of it. So that would be the fraction. For 26 days, that radioactive metal is found to have 1 16th of its original activity. What is the half-life? So I'm going to start off again with a fraction of 1 and then time. So a fraction of 1, and then I go to a half, then I go to an eighth, then I go to a 16th. Okay, so it took 1, 2, 3 half-lives. 3 half-lives. So 3 half-lives equals 26 days. So 26 over 3 equals 1 half-life. 26 divided by 3 is 8.66 days. Dink. Review. Fission equals splitting. Fusion equals sticking. Radioactivity, yeah, radioactivity has many specific uses to know. And half-life calculations are fun. And I should be saying you dropped a bomb on me, but that never comes that quickly. Toodles. Just go.